Hello and welcome to my video all about how to make a pangolin out of cardboard. I seem to have amassed a fair amount of cardboard packaging recently and I've been pondering what I could do with it that's a bit different to what I normally make. I decided an animal sculpture would be fun and I thought card would lend itself to animals with scales and that led me to pangolins. I'm going to make the armour metallic looking rather than all brown just to make it a bit more interesting. In order to follow along, you're going to need some cardboard, some regular printer paper, a black piece of paper, some scissors, a pencil, a pen, some paint or a paint pen, gold and silver spray paint if you want the scales to look metallic, strong tape and strong glue. For the glue, I used UHU All Purpose Adhesive. For the tape, I used black duct tape. And for the card, I used cardboard from packaging and also thin card from a cereal box. In hindsight, a hot glue gun would probably have been a better choice for the glue. The first thing you need to do is use your pencil to draw out the template on a large piece of paper, or on four pieces of paper taped together. The main rectangle shape that you'll need to draw first is 28cm tall and 24cm wide. Each leg section within this rectangle measures 7.5cm tall and 12cm wide. The pointed nose section sticks out by 9cm and the start of the tail section sticks out by 7cm. Ideally, when you draw this out, you'll want the lines of the corrugated card to line up lengthwise along the body, but it's not vital. The shape doesn't have to be exact and it also doesn't have to be the same as mine. Note that I also drew pencil lines that come in about a third of the way on either side of the leg sections and on either side of the pointed nose section. Then you need to transfer this design to a large piece of cardboard. I did this with a black sharpie. You then need to cut along all of the black lines. Next, you need to shape the leg sections so that they curve towards the underside. Work from one side to the other of each section, making lots of parallel creases as you go. This allows the cardboard to be curved more smoothly. Then you need to curve the body section like so. The pointed face or nose section needs to be pushed back under the body section slightly so that there's some overlap. This overlap needs to be glued in place. In hindsight, a hot glue gun would probably have been a better choice. Then cut out a semicircle shape from cardboard which can fit into the underside of the body section when the body is curved into position. Glue this shape along the curved edge and attach it somewhere around the centre of the body. Then curve the leg sections into cylinders as smoothly as you can. Use strong tape to keep them in place. In order to make the back, you then need to use some thin card. I used the two largest rectangle shapes from a cereal box, i.e. the front and back sections. You need to curve the two rectangles, like so, then tape them together along the short edges. This piece needs to be long enough to create the arched back and the tail of the pangolin. If not, you'll now need to add more card. You then need to cut slits into both of the long sides and these cuts need to be symmetrical. I cut about a third of the way across the width on each side. This will allow you to curve the piece of card and create shape.
You want to create an arch that will cover the back of the pangolin and then the card will go straight and then it will start to curve in the opposite direction towards the end of the tail. Start by working your way along one side, overlapping the card slightly at each cut. As you shape this piece of card, you're going to need strong tape to keep it in position. You want a kind of flowing wave shape. Keep checking how this looks on the body section. Then do exactly the same along the other long edge to match. Then cut an arch out of the front of this card section so it'll fit better around the neck. Add this card shape onto the cardboard body and secure it in place. You can now paint any areas that will remain exposed after the scales have been added. In my case this was the face. I just did this very simply by using a black paint pen to draw out the eye shapes and then I painted in the rest of the area. If you want to do this more artistically or realistically feel free to do so. I just wanted all of the focus to be on the scales. And talking of scales that's what we're going to make next. If you want metallic scales, you'll first need to spray paint a couple of large pieces of card, one gold and one silver. And as a side note, I would definitely recommend spraying a clear sealer onto the card after the paint is dry, so it doesn't come off on your hands or on anything else. You'll need to make three paper templates of differently sized scales, and you'll need to use these to cut out all of the scales you're going to need. I cut out 6 of the smallest type, 64 of the medium type and 30 of the largest type. So all in all, in total I made 100 scales. And once you've done that, you need to add your scales, working from the tip of the tail to the head. I started with the medium size of scale, but you could work from the smaller size first if you wanted. I went for a fairly random mix of silver and gold on some rows, whilst many rows were just alternating colours. It's up to you how you arrange them. Note that you don't want to start the lines of scales from the same side every time. You want to alternate it at least most of the time to get a balanced look, i.e. you want to go from left to right, then right to left, then left to right, and so on. I changed to the largest size to cover the majority of the body, and then back to the medium size again before I reached the head. Then I finished with a few of the smaller scales on the head. And now, to keep the legs in position, you need to tape the tops of them together, like so. Then you can cut across the bottoms of the legs to make them sit flat on the table. Make sure that the legs are stable with no wobbles. Adjust them if necessary.
and as a final step the legs need to be covered. You could of course add small scales to the legs if you wished, but I wanted the focus to be on the scales along the back, so I just wrapped the legs in plain black paper. To do this, just cut out a rectangle of paper the same height as the leg, then just wrap the paper around the leg and tape it in place on the inside. Do the same for all of the legs. And that's it, your pangolin is now complete. I really hope you like this project and thank you very much for watching.